Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of June 20th, 2025. Let's start off today talking about automation modes. You're going to want to make sure it's visible from the toolbar. So if we go up to the toolbar, right click, come down the list. There's one that says automation modes. Just make sure that's checked. And that gives us a drop down list. If we click on that list, we have an option for touch, one for auto latch, and another for crossover. If we take the first option for touch, then I'm going to take this song and solo this track. If I open up the channel editor, if I turn the option for right on for this channel, and then click on this knob that says HC, which stands for the high cut, it immediately puts some kind of automation data in here. I'm going to isolate this track so we can look at it. Let's just make a smaller loop area to work on. Now I'm going to begin moving this high cut knob and creating some automation data and let's see what happens. And then we can see that we have some data that's been written in here. Let's see what happens now if we begin to try to write over this data. You can see that it's written in the new data, but as soon as I let go of the knob that I was changing, it went right back to the old data. So in other words, as long as I'm writing data and holding the knob, it will continue to put in the new data. But the minute I release the knob, whatever data has been written, it will automatically go right back and pick up from that point. Let me make a little more exaggerated example. I'm going to draw this data straight across as one straight line. And now as it plays, I'm only going to write data in the middle. And again, you can see it began writing right where the line was. As I turned the knob up above the line, then that's what it did. But as soon as I let go of the knob, it went right back down to the original line, and then continued on from that point. Some other interesting behaviors of this touch mode, at least the way it's set up right now. If I change a level and it's on a loop point like this, it's going to retain that level even when it comes back around to the loop. I'm going to bring it way down and watch when it starts over again. The level is still way down. And it will stay that way until I start raising it up. Another thing to observe with this, watch how it changes the remaining automation after the loop point. As the cursor reaches the end point, whatever that level is, it's going to change the remaining automation to that for the remainder of the song. Again, I'm going to bring it down. Watch how it stays low when it reaches the end of the loop point. Now watch how it goes high again. Whatever it ends with at the loop point, writes automation continuing on that way. And then if we change to this next option that says the auto latch, what significantly changes here is whatever value I set, even after I release it, it remains at that same level. I'm going to play this and raise it up all the way, and then I'm going to let go of it. And it stays that way until the loop begins over, and then it disables whatever it is latched to and begins following the original automation again. And then we have this last option in our dropdown called the crossover. This behavior is a little tricky to understand, and it definitely has some conditions to it to make it operate properly. If I go over to the knob I've been using, in this case the high cut, if I continue to hold the knob and not let go of it, as long as I continue to hold it, I can continue to write changes, and it will behave pretty much like the original touch knob did. Right now I'm going to write over this existing automation and I'm just going to write a straight line. Watch how it negates what current automation is written here. So now I've drawn a straight line and as long as I kept holding this knob, it would just continue writing this. Or it would write a curve, whatever I was doing, as long as I didn't let go of the knob. What the crossover does that is unique to it and different from the other modes, if I perform an operation where I begin writing the automation, in this case I'll go halfway through these bars, 
If I then release the knob for a second or two and then begin drawing again, whatever the threshold level, in this case, this straight line, when I reach that threshold level, whether I'm coming from above it or coming from below it, once it reaches that threshold level, that threshold level will then take over, disengage my writing of automation, and then just continue on the straight line. So again, in this example, what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw an automation curve that goes high. Then I'm going to start to come down low. At that point, I'm going to release the knob. So this cursor is going to move a little bit. I will then engage the knob again. And as I approach this existing line, this existing line will not let me go any further. It will take over and I won't be able to draw, in other words, way over the top here. That's what it means by crossover. Let me try to play it and describe it as I go. I'm going low. I'm going to start to raise it. I'm going to release it. Now I'm going to start to go down. As I went down, even though I was holding the knob, it took over right when it hit this threshold line and would not allow me to go any lower. This is a great option when you have some predefined lines and you don't want to be overshooting them, either going higher or lower. This crossover is built for that kind of a situation. It takes a minute to get a handle on how it's working, but once you get it, it's a pretty useful option. Okay, the last tip I want to share with you today. So far, we've been using these automation modes with the mouse. In other words, whatever I click on with the mouse, I hold it, turn the knob, but it's all done with the mouse. But what if you're using some kind of remote control device? When I use the mouse, I'm going to go back to the touch mode here. The minute I hit this knob and hold it, I'm engaged and sending data because I'm still holding this knob. But if I use some kind of controller on my remote device, and I have a keyboard remote device hooked up to Cubase, when I turn the knob, for example, if I still use this high cut, if you look at the high cut knob, I'm going to turn my remote control device and it's controlling that knob and turning it. It's no longer really sending information when I stop turning the knob. The difference when I'm using my mouse, I can keep the button pressed and in essence, I'm keeping this control engaged. But if I have a remote control device, it doesn't continually send information unless I'm actually moving the knob. So what will happen, we're sometimes using the mouse will automatically provide kind of a smoother control because again, it's always sending some kind of information as long as I'm holding the knob down. When I switch to my remote control device and I play the song, I start moving the control and writing information. If I let go of that knob, you'll find that you will get spikes. Typically things will jump around fairly quickly because again, there's no data being sent the minute you stop moving the knob. There's a control that you can look at. If we go back up to our automation mode drop down, there's a little E button here. And this opens up the automation panel. The automation panel is loaded with all kinds of stuff. And I cover all of this stuff in the digital audio manual in detail. But the thing I want to show you, if you go to the settings area, there's an option here that says return time. And this is kind of the secret sauce and how fast your automation control responds. By default, it's set at 33 milliseconds. And as long as it's at that 33 milliseconds or lower, it's very easy to get these kind of sharp peaks and dips. But if I alter that, turn it up a little bit, say I go up to about 200 milliseconds. When I start changing the automation now, the curves are much smoother. And if you look carefully at it, it kind of does a look ahead. You can see that it's affecting automation quite a bit into the future. But the bottom line, it takes away those spikes so that even when I'm not turning the knob, it doesn't jump around so quickly. Very worthwhile for you to experiment with those numbers on this return time option. I find that actually if you go up to around 500 with it, it actually can go all the way up to like 3000, but I keep it right around 500 if I'm using some kind of automation knob like this and it makes for very smooth curves. So try to experiment a little bit with your return time. See if that doesn't produce some really nice results in terms of how your automation changes over time, especially when you're doing a loop option like this or you don't want it to spike so much. It's another one of those kind of hidden things that if you understand it, you can put all of this stuff in more of your control. So have some fun with those tips. Go make some great music with it. And then I'll see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. 
If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we had a look at the various automation modes. We learned about the touch, the auto latch, and the crossover. We went through quite a few different examples so we could see them all in action, how they are different, how they're the same. And then I showed you some of those hidden settings that are in the automation panel under the return time to help you get some smoother automation curves in case things are spiking a bit. And we'll continue to learn about all these different features and functions and our various creative options. As always, it's great to have you guys here and I'll see you on the next video.